Jax lied awake in his bed, staring up at the ceiling. Something had happened during today's adventure and it just didn't let him rest. The money band blinked. Was he worried? Yeah. Yeah, he was actually concerned for something other than himself. He felt strangely vulnerable, despite knowing the only danger here was his own mind. He should just stop thinking about it, but he couldn't. At the same time, Jax knew if he kept thinking about it, he would probably abstract. It had been a pirate-themed adventure. He and his crew of scallywags were made up of Ragatha, Kanger and you. For the event, Kane pulled no punches. It was beautifully animated water. Sea shanties and treasures were plenty. Of course, Pomni, Gangle and Zubel, and just to have an even number, or pirates, Kane had given them one of his NPCs, Bubble. They were on a different crew and therefore a huge danger to the plunder. They had been on sea for multiple days and nights. Treasure chests piling up safely inside of the brig. It had been fun, actually. The randomly generated islands of the sea were filled with food, dangers and gold. And it was just something super different to do from regular adventures. It was on the third day when from the crow's nest you had shouted, There they are, Captain! There was a ship on the horizon, and judging by its slightly smaller size and colorful sails, that was not an NPC ship. Confidently, Jax had ordered everyone to their positions. Kinger was put on cannon duty, all he had to do was care about shooting. While you and Ragatha did your best to keep sails at the reasonable positions and fixing any holes and water that filled the brig. Jax's only goal, meanwhile, was maneuvering the ship in a way that allowed for a full broadside as often as possible. But things were becoming a mess quickly. It was only through the mistakes made, or what Jax considered the enemy ship, that they were winning. But that's when he was hit by a cannonball. Right in the face. Throwing off the ship into the turbulent waters. Water filled the bunny man's lungs. His head felt like it was splitting apart. With all his might, Jax tried to swim upwards, not realizing that thanks to the clouds created by the cannon fire, he was actually swimming deeper rather than towards the top. His lungs screamed for air and his vision became blurry as he heard the faint meowing of a cat followed by his own voice and the clapping of hands like an echo from the past and seconds later Jax only saw black the bunny man blinked at the memories he of course didn't want to think about this. After all, it made him feel bad. And whatever made him feel bad, he didn't care about. But he couldn't stop himself. No matter how hard he tried. After the adventure that still ended with his team winning, all by without him, as he had game over it, and just woke up inside the regular digital circus, still wet and in his pirate getup. You stood proudly next to Jax and the others, as Kane congratulated you and your success. It was then he teleported one of the chests onto the stage. You recognized it as one of yours. The treasures secured by Jax's band of scalywags were filled with chocolate coins. Actually, they all were. But isn't that great? Everyone looked at each other. Minus Jax, who just stared at the floor. 
Normally learning that the great treasure you found on a multi-day voyage through treacherous waters was actually just fancily packed up chocolate pieces would lead to a deadly mutiny. But not in the digital circus. As you looked around yourself, everyone was smiling. <laughs> and so were you. Chocolate coins shared between everyone was a great way to survive. Food was normally only given after adventures in the form of a feast, and while yes, hunger wasn't felt in the digital circus, it certainly was a good way to waste some time. And now everyone had a little chocolate stockpile to waste time with. To you and your fellow pirates, this was great plunder. But that's when you noticed the lack of enthusiasm in Jax's face. During the adventure you had gotten close. Well, sort of. Inside the digital circus you had become a strange creature that was a mix of a human, a cat and a bird. Your hands were exactly that. Hands, covered in a thin brown fur that covered everything above your navel, including your arms. Your face was human, with super pale, almost white skin. Red harp shapes were seemingly tattooed on your cheeks. They glowed a bright red whenever you blushed. Your eyes were a bright orange, and your tiny cat slits in them. You had four ears, two cat ones that shot through your long, wavy hair, and two human ones on the sides of your head. All four worked perfectly, making loud noises incredibly distracting and frightening to you. Your legs were scaly and yellow, ending in sharp talons. And you had a cat tail that was covered in black crow feathers. Since your chest was humanoid, you chose to wear clothes. Not everyone could be like Zubul, Kinger or Gangle after all. You wore a large shirt that changed colors whenever you blinked, and red shorts that reached just past to where the human skin changed to the scaly bird skin. Your name in this world was Kitty Hawk. Since there was no such thing as first or last names in the digital circus, everyone either called you Kitty or Hawk or both. Though you preferred the full name, Kitty Hawk. It sounded cool. And you liked Jax. You had liked him since you arrived. Since your approach to the entire situation with the digital circus was to see it as being stuck in a video game, you had developed a cheerful personality. In your head, this entire thing would be over once you won the game. Uh, whatever the goal of it was. This was the best way for you to cope with this situation. But also this made Jax like you in return, as the two of you seemed to work perfectly off each other. He did a prank, and you were the only one finding it funny. You cracked terribly dark jokes that sometimes were very self-aware, that he found absolutely entertaining. And one of your favorite pastimes was tormenting Pomni, who even now still had trouble dealing with everything. Her anxiety was through the roof, even though you arrived after her. And so it was no wonder you noticed Jax being not really himself after the adventure first. He had spent the entire voyage either petting you or firing you out of a cannon for fun. And of course, this allowed you to explore islands quicker. Now that you didn't feel his hand on your head constantly, you were just staring at him. During the feast, after the coins were collected, and as everyone walked over into their living quarters, he didn't speak a word. It reminded you of what the others said. Abstraction, that was the word. And it worried you. You gulped. And then, jumped on your feet out of your bed. Well, you thought, if Jax was sad and going to abstract, who better to help him than his beloved kitty? Energetically, you strutted out of your room and walked across the hallway to his door. 
First you knocked, then you rang the bell, and then you waited, and waited, and you were quickly getting impatient. Meanwhile, Jack still stared at the ceiling. The memory that was haunting him. Not even the ringing of the doorbell could get him up. Well, at least that's what the depressed bunny thought. But once the ringing turned from short bursts to a constant flow, as you just mashed the button, he couldn't hold himself back anymore. Sighing, Jack stood up and walked over to the door. What? He barked at you. Trying to sleep. His eyes fell down on you. As you were squeezing your chest provocatively. Oh. Just you. Your cat ears wiggled excitedly. Hey, Dex, can I come in? He blinked. Sure. You followed him inside. So why are you bothering me? He asked directly. You seemed down. I wanted to cheer you up. He blinked perplexed. Jax didn't feel like the two of you had that kind of relationship. Then again, you always sucked at reading the room. And he wasn't feeling it enough to just kick you out. You sat down next to him on his bed. Jax had a very untidy room, just like his personality. But there was a method to the chaos. It was organized, almost as if it was specifically made to annoy a concerned mother. A sort of, I know where everything is until you told me to clean up kind of mess. Ugh, it felt very homely. So, Jax, what's wrong? He crossed his arms defiantly. <laughs> I'm fine! You're just imagining things. You purred as you pushed your head against his shoulders. I'm sure you are fine, but I'm asking if something is wrong. Jax rolled his eyes. I'm just worried you abstract. <sighs> Stop talking like that. Jax managed to suppress blushing. He could feel your incredibly soft, voluptuous body press against him, and it made it super difficult to think. And he really wasn't in the mood for that. He wanted to keep remembering, as painful as it was. He placed a hand on his chest, making the hairs on his neck stand up. Stop, he barked. I don't want to look at you. He crossed his arms, forcing his gaze away from you. And even though he clearly didn't intend it, his right arm glitched just a bit. A droplet of anxious sweat ran down your forehead. Jack, I'm serious, you said, the ears on your head tightly pressing against your scalp, immediately showing the anxiety you felt in this moment. What's wrong? No jokes. Probably hit me with a cannonball. You blinked, trying to suppress any emotional reaction to that thought. Though, hearing him say something as ridiculous as that certainly increased your heart rate a little, as well as making you blush. You could fear that wasn't it, though. His pride was turd. He might remember something. Something from way back when. And the more I think about it, the more sense it makes. You gulped. Jax? What is it? You asked seriously. Don't laugh. You're the last person I want to hear laugh at it. He looked at the floor. I think I remember my pet. A cat. The moment he said, Pet, your stomach turned. 
I explained why he couldn't look at you. And a cat? I don't remember how she looked like. I don't even know if it was a childhood cat or a more recent purchase. I do remember there was hand clapping. <laughs> Either way, I'm... <sighs> I've been in the digital circus for what I think is a year. Maybe more. And I... You put a hand on his leg. His right jittered a little as he rubbed over his face with it. Jax may be denying it. He may be fighting it, but... If you left him right now, letting him wallow like that, he'd surely abstract. A cruel, sadistic part of yourself was... curious. You had never seen an abstraction before. Of course the rest of yourself was disgusted by your thoughts. I'm just thinking. What is my cat doing right now? That I'm here, unable to leave. His words conjured up images in your head that were difficult to just shake away. You exhaled sharply to not be affected by his words. The threat of abstraction fascinated you, but that didn't mean you wanted it to happen to yourself. Why are you telling me this? He looked at you. There was a hint of annoyance in his expression. Jax, I know you're intelligent enough to tell me anything. A lie. There was enough time for you to think. To tell me one. Or an excuse. Something that would be a hundred times sadder than this. So why did you tell me the truth just now? Jax knew what you were doing. You were giving him a way to let out his sadness while at the same time conserve some image of a macho. That was very thoughtful of you. I'll give you the same advice you gave me. Don't think about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's terrible advice. Fine. Something different, then. What are adventures? Fun little distractions to keep us from going cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Gingerly, you climbed on his lap. I saw jumping as he felt your soft body press against his. And Jax. You whispered into his ear. In the digital circus, you do everything to waste as much time as possible. Spending any time on the life you lived and the life you want to live after you leave the circus will only lead to abstraction. His eyes narrowed. That's what I said to you. <laughs> That's what you're not doing right now. He puffed up his cheeks in protest, but before he could retort anything, he felt your soft, warm lips press on him. It made his eyes widen in surprise. He definitely didn't see this coming, but he wasn't against it. Jax, though, hesitated. And he felt your lips perk into a smile as your breath brushed against his fur. The bunny gasped into you, which made you bolder. With your hands, you grabbed his wrists, forcing him to grip your butt tightly. Almost immediately, he squeezed, making you shiver in delight. You place your hands around his head, pushing him down on his bed, before fiddling with the suspenders of his overall. 
gently unhooking them. Jax's hands moved up from your rear over to your hips, sliding up to your chest. Almost aggressively, he wrapped his fingers around your mass of orbs, still contained by your shirt. He kneaded the flesh below like Play-Doh, making you purr loudly. Your tail quickly waved around out of pure bliss. It was then that you smirked and leaned up, taking a hold of the bottom of your shirt. And Jack smiled as you pulled it off. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive.